the stress response. In stressful situations, the body switches on its autonomic nervous system and neurobiological processes in an attempt to maintain homeostasis. The body is prepared for its reaction to stress. In the brain, the hypothalamus is connected to the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus, stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system, releases the hormone corticotrophin releasing factor, CRF. The CRF activates the pituitary gland to release the adrenocorticotrophic hormone, ACTH. This in turn alerts the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are located on top of each kidney. The ACTH from the pituitary gland stimulates the adrenal cortex to release cortisol. At the same time, neurons in the hypothalamus signal the medulla to release epinephrine, adrenaline, and norepinephrine, noradrenaline. These hormones then push the body into hyperalertness. Okay, that was just a quick demonstration of how that works. So, now when you're when you so it just shows you right there from your feelings. Your feelings, your emotions create an actual physical response. And that goes for everything, not just stress. Happiness, joy. So if we, allow, if we turn on the TV and we allow ourselves to see these images where the media is giving us images sometimes on purpose, like all of a sudden it's you know the worst flu season ever and everybody gets sick just because their body is releasing the hormones to tell them to get sick. So don't let other people control you. It's time to start waking up and taking control of your own consciousness, your own third eye, releasing yourself from your own reptilian survival instinct methods, it's time to move ahead. The mastery, self-mastery, is taking control and choosing for yourself. And if you can't control, this is from the movie What the Bleep. I have a little clip here, but I'm going to skip that because the, the images on there are not that good. But basically it shows in this clip, I just recommend you watching What the Bleep. In the movie, they show that uh, when you have a stress response or anything else, kind of like I showed you in that clip, the hypothalamus releases certain hormones. So you have a hormone or chemical related to everything. So you have a stress hormone, a happy hormone, uh, a lust hormone. All these are released when you feel certain ways. So a feeling actually gets turned into a physical response. And, it, and that's what also leads to illness or health when we uh, release certain hormones. So we can begin to take control of that. And one of, the, one of the lines I really like in the movie the best is, if you can't control your mental state, you must be addicted to it. And all of us are in different ways addicted to certain things, and we're definitely addicted to feeling certain ways. And we have to start uh, breaking those addictions. And that's why I say the path to mastery, or the path with the masters on it, is lightly traveled. Because a lot of people like to get into all the new age, you know, tarot reading and studying and looking at things, but the real masters are the ones that are doing the nitty-gritty work, getting inside their heads, working to release all this bad programming and move on. And that's what we all must do. And there's plenty of time. You don't have to do it this life or any other life, but eventually you'll be pushed to do it. But if, the longer you prolong that, the longer you'll be in illusion. So with EFT and other forms of energy work, we are loosening the addiction. We're loosening the connection of these uh, peptides and synapses of the nerves. We're, we're, le we're loosening those connections so we can move forward. And when we loosen those connections, more possibilities are open to us. Because when we're thinking certain ways or experiencing uh, reality a certain way, only releasing a certain range of hormones, we limit our possibilities. We limit what we can see in the world. We limit our third eye view. And ultimately, like this representation here, is the station, the state of your ions, the energy state of yourself, is much like the, your car radio. So when you're born, automatically your parents, peers, preachers, teachers are already programming those little buttons on your car. You know when you get in your car and you push a button, how it's got a pre-grown, pre-preset station? Right from birth, you're being pre-programmed. And then as you get older in life, those pre-programs play out and and ruin your life to a certain degree. Sometimes you even create some of your own for self-defense. Um, and that's okay when you're in that situation, but once you're grown up 15 years later and you're not in that environment, uh, something about guarding your heart may actually then limit your life as you get older. Ideally, 
we've got to reprogram our own buttons by taking control of the master switch. That's the one where you actually dial in back to the toroidal field, your energy field, dialing in what you want to experience and pre-programming your own buttons. You, you can't just let them run on their own. And this is where that, that uh, term, somebody pushing your buttons, comes from. Because when, if you have a charge on something, and say, say the word chicken, like say, I don't have a, I don't have a charge with anybody calling me a chicken. I mean, it seems kind of stupid to me, but somebody might have a real big charge with being called chicken. So that means that they have a button on it. So if somebody says chicken, it's like pushing that button, and they'll be on that station for days, weeks, God knows how long sometimes. Uh, and the idea is once you find yourself being pushed, that button being pushed, you have to identify it and reprogram it. And there's lots of ways to do that. I like EFT, Body Talk, two of the main ones that I really like to do that. But we have to start taking control of our own master switch. And that master switch ultimately is the toroidal field, the round dial, our energy body. And we can start dialing in our own uh, experiences of reality, what we really want. And everything you do, eat, watch, think, and hear is tuning you in and out of certain real estates or energy states. And this is really important. There's lots of foods out there like MSG, aspartame, lots of chemical additives to our food that literally, and I mean literally, change the, ex the expression of certain chemicals in your mind. And a lot of autism, you know, autism spectrum, they, they, they tell these people not to eat certain foods. And it's really important. When you go out and eat a bunch of junk food, you are tuning yourself or leaving yourself open to be tuned to something that you may not want to be tuned to. It ultimately comes down to self-mastery. And self-mastery isn't something you can just wish. It involves all seven chakras. So the root chakra has about doing action. The second chakra is how you feel your creativity. The third chakra is your willpower. Your heart is where you keep your heart's desire. Your words... Uh, are your throat chakra, your third eye is your visual, and your crown chakra is thought. All of those need to be tuned to what you want to have experience. When we let those vary, we don't get what we want. We don't tune in or dial in to exactly what we want. So self-mastery is a process, but we have to be aware of what's going on. I'm just trying to show, out of all my searching, what's, what's loosening my desire to seek anymore is now I see it. Now I see it as so simple and I want other people to see it so you can stop seeking and start working with what you need to be working with because seeking, a lot of people seek, seek, seek but never really actualize anything at all. They can spend their whole life seeking and if you do that you're not embodying what, what you're meant to do, embodying the concept of spirituality. It's all like a mental game and you know it's fun to play but you're never really getting anywhere. Another cool thing about the sphenoid bone is it's also called the butterfly-shaped bone. And this made me think of the movie Butterfly Effect. And uh, Ashton Kircher, who's in the movie, he's this uh, kid that's born with the ability, like his father, to manipulate time and space. And it's exactly what we can do with our own sphenoid bone. And look at where they highlighted inside on the actual poster. It's right there where the sphenoid bone is. So again, I don't think that's an accident. It's like a, a, what I call a reflective from the collective. We all have a collective consciousness. And whatever book, movie, whatever you read and see usually has some kind of reflective information uh, from the collective in it. So here, whether it was meant to or not, conscious or unconscious, I'm seeing the message. I'm like reading the matrix here and saying that here's this movie about the butterfly effect where this guy can alter reality through um, this butterfly effect which is related to the sphenoid bone. Again, that's just cool to me how that reflects. I have a little movie clip here, but you know, you can look at it on your own. It's a pretty intense movie. Um, so, having said that, you know, some people may not be into that, but um, it's, it's an interesting movie. You'll, you'll get what I, I'm trying to say if you watch the movie. And I think it's on Netflix. And